Dijkstra's desire for rigorous proof was shared by many at the NATO conference. Their work in the 60s and 70s gave birth to so-called formal methods of software development. Formal methods emphasize the use of logic and proof to create specifications and programs. There's a range of formality that can be employed. Maybe only the specifications are formal. The programs are developed as usual, informally, but with the aid of having formal specifications. Some languages exist for writing these kinds of formal specifications. One of the more popular is the Z notation. Or maybe the specifications are formal, and in addition, the programs are formally proved to satisfy them. Dijkstra's weakest precondition calculus and Hoare's logic of partial correctness assertions are two of the best-known methodologies. David Grease's 1981 book, The Science of Programming, is a landmark presentation of how to apply this kind of methodology. Or, not only are the specifications are formal, and not only are the programs formally proved to satisfy them, but the proofs themselves are written so formally that a computer can mechanically check them. And not only that, but the computer could be made partially or even fully responsible for finding the proof by itself. That last idea, making the computer responsible for the proof, might seem at first to be an unattainable goal, especially in the light of two negative results from the 1930s in the foundations of mathematics. In 1931, Kurt Gödel rocked the world of mathematical logic by proving his first incompleteness theorem. He showed that any logic strong enough to reason about arithmetic must be incomplete. There will be propositions that can neither be proved nor disproved. Arithmetic is a small subject, relatively speaking, and certainly a subject that our programs need to use. So we already have to admit a certain amount of defeat. If the correctness of our program involves such a proposition, we can't succeed. The second result came in 1936 from Alan Turing, when he showed that the halting problem is undecidable. That is, no computer program can perfectly determine whether another program will either terminate or run forever, enter an infinite loop in other words, on a given input. So we have to admit even more defeat. If the correctness of our program requires that it terminate with an output, we can't succeed. And these are but two negative results of many that were proved in that era and later. Perhaps the most damning is Rice's theorem, proved by Henry Gordon Rice in his 1951 doctoral dissertation at Syracuse University. Now, I haven't been able to find a definitive photo of Professor Rice, so I've substituted uh, this photo of a bowl of rice instead. His theorem says that it's not just the halting problem that's undecidable. Every property of a program is undecidable, unless that property is in some way what he called trivial. Uh, for example, it's true of all programs, or it's a property of the syntax of the program rather than its semantics. Now note that many, most of the analyses compilers do today therefore are in fact trivial because they are based on the syntax of a program. But his theorem still establishes that the truly interesting semantic properties of programs are undecidable. Or in modern vernacular, we are so screwed. But all is not lost. As an imperfect analogy, even though faster than light travel is, or at least might be impossible, I can still drive from my home in Ithaca to New York City on the weekend. What's impossible at the far off limits need not inhibit what is possible and useful in everyday affairs. Think about type systems. Even though Java or OCaml might not have types that can specify this is a factorial function, they can get partway there still by saying, this is a function on integers. So the goal need not be perfection of program proof, but of useful possibility. That's where asking the computer to itself participate in the proof process has become profitable in the last couple of decades. Proofs that were too detailed for humans to carry out can be done by machines in far less time and with far less opportunity for careless error.
There are many success stories that can be told. TLA Plus is one. It is a framework for program verification invented by Leslie Lamport. TLA is an acronym for the Temporal Logic of Actions. It has been used by Intel for a cache coherence protocol, Microsoft for the Xbox 360, and by Amazon for web services such as DynamoDB and S3. TLA Plus can be used to formally state what properties a program should satisfy, to formally model the program, and to automatically check that the model satisfies the properties. Another success story is COC, the framework that we're going to study in these lectures.